Okay, so now we're going to talk about anaerobic respiration. And anaerobic respiration is where there is no oxygen or not enough oxygen. And so what's going to happen is they're going to use some other acceptor molecule other than oxygen. So methanogens are a type of bacteria. And what they actually do is they use carbon dioxide to accept their electrons. And as a byproduct, they create methane. Methane stinks, right? It's natural gas. Um, you find that in like swamps and stuff like that. Then there's also sulfur bacteria, and what they're going to do is create hydrogen sulfide as a byproduct. So those are some examples of ones that are going to do anaerobic respiration. Now we're going to talk a little bit further about that in, in a little bit, but just to get that out of the way. Okay, now that NADH, what's going to happen is we had all those NAD pluses picking up um, and, and turning into NADH, and they end up at the electron transport chain, but they're all the way at the electron transport chain, right? So when they drop off that hydrogen, they definitely need to go back and be recycled, okay? So um, when we talk about the electrons going down the electron transport chain, oxygen in aerobic respiration is going to be the electron acceptor. Um, we can also do fermentation, and fermentation is going to be where we use an organic molecule to accept those electrons. Now, we can do fermentation. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It's a little different than the fermentation that you use for, like, yeast to make bread to rise or to make beer or something like that. Okay. Now, acetyl-CoA. Um, what's going to happen with that acetyl-CoA is that it can be used to make more ATP in the Krebs cycle if you need it. But if you have enough ATP, then it's going to decide that you need to put that ATP potential energy into storage. How are you going to store it? Well, fat. So let's say you have a donut. A donut has got a lot of sugar and fat, right? So that's going to have a lot of potential for making ATP. But let's say you're sitting on the couch. Well, if you're sitting on the couch, you don't need a lot of ATP, right? So what your body is going to say is, well, we have enough, but you keep ingesting more. Let's store it in case we need it later. And that's how your pants get tight, right? So that's how we do that. All right, so if we were to total up the total amount of ATP that we are going to be using, we can come back here, all right? So let's do it. We've got, in glycolysis, we've made two ATP. In the second stage, which is going to be pyruvate oxidation, zero ATP. Then in the Krebs or citric acid cycle, two ATP. And then in the electron transport chain, 32 to 34 ATP. So that gives us a total of 36 to 38 ATP. So that's the total amount of ATP that we are going to create in this process. That is called our theoretical yield. That means on paper, that's how much ATP we should get out of glucose. However, actual yield is 30. So the reason it's a lot lower is because we have leaks in that membrane. So a couple of those hydrogens might wiggle through. They're not going to go through that ATP synthase. And then also we can use that proton gradient and that um, energy to do stuff other than make ATP. So the scary part is that this amount of ATP per glucose molecule is only a third of the potential energy that a glucose molecule has. So we waste a lot of energy in different ways getting that energy out. All right. So remember um, when I mentioned that if we have enough ATP, there's not going to be any reason to make any more, right? So what's going to happen is if your ATP levels are high, so that would be like if you ate a bunch of donuts and are sitting on the couch, then you're going to stop the um, Krebs cycle and you're going to put that energy into storage, right? On the other hand, if you have high ADP levels and low ATP levels, then your body might say, uh, either you need to eat more glucose or I'm going to pull it from your fats. And that's how you can lose weight, right? Doesn't it seem simple? Yeah, it sure does. Okay, so um, the next video, we're just going to talk. Actually, no, we're going to finish this one. <laughs> okay, so um, fermentation. So fermentation is going to be something that we can do and also that yeast can do. And there's two types. You've got ethanol fermentation, which is what yeast does, and that's where it's actually going to use sugars, and it's going to produce CO2 as a byproduct. 
Now, <clears throat> it's not as efficient as make, at making ATP as aerobic respiration, but it's okay. And what's going to happen is we use that CO2 gas to help our bread to rise, right? That's why we put yeast in bread is to make it rise. Well, it's those little CO2 bubbles it's making from the process of fermentation that does that. We can also use that fermentation process to make beer and wine and alcohol and cheese and all those types of things. Now, the type of um, fermentation that we do in our body is lactic acid fermentation. So if you think about it, let's say that you go for a jog. The first thing that you're going to start doing once you've been jogging for a little bit is you're going to start breathing heavier. And the reason for that is because you're using up ATP and you need to make more. How are you going to make more? Well, the process of cellular respiration. So what you're going to do is you're going to start breathing heavier to get more oxygen to that electron transport chain so you can make more ATP. However, there's going to be a point where you can't get enough oxygen to your tissues to do that. And at that point, you're going to switch over to lactic acid fermentation. When that happens, you're going to create lactic acid as a byproduct, and it's not as efficient at making ATP, so you're not going to have as much energy, but you will have a little bit. And what's going to happen is as that lactic acid builds up, it's going to burn. So if you've ever worked out and you start to feel the burn, that's the lactic acid fermentation that's happening. Okay, so that's going to be cellular respiration. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.